hopefully it'll continue to grow. And I will need some, some volunteer help that day. So with the, uh, and I'll call you and change on that one reason. Is there some way I can help you from one volunteer You could be thinking about potential sponsors I could talk to. And then um, hopefully we can get the audience committee together and uh, try to map out the rest of the, the uh, year's outings. Um, the initial plan, or the tentative plan, is to try to do a different segment of the Alapa River Trail in the first you know, six months of the year each month. So that means the next time we're trying to put in Town Church and going down to 135, 135 to et cetera, et cetera. Well, I think we have you some assistance. Um, I kind of lost track of how many of the executive committee voted. Uh, Dave, did you vote on adding Chris Miracle to the audience? I did. Already, by unanimous vote of the executive committee, Chris Miracle is added to the audience committee as Brett requested. So now maybe you have enough people that will actually be some discussion. Um, I volunteer to help with the battle race and also I'd like to go on the battle this Saturday. Um, also, um, you're quite right, not all the events or outings are listed on there. The ones that you mentioned that aren't are actually on the, with the uh, water trail update. And I suggest that we do something to make them all easier to find, which is I'd like to put together a spreadsheet of, it's probably going to be mostly outings and events such as uh, conferences and workshops, so that we could keep track of all this stuff so we can easily find it in the future. Sounds great. Okay, I will uh, turn something together and stick it on the Google site. So this will also make it possible for any one of us to add something to that whenever something new happens. Okay, um, and yes, thanks for organizing all that there, Chris. Do you have more on outings or should we move to the next item? That's all I have this Okay. Um, Chris Graham, the Lapa River Water Trail Committee. Alrighty. Well, there's an item we need to. Um, all of you should have gotten a copy of the Mid-Year Progress Report. Uh, you've seen it online. Everybody here has got paper copies. Oh, yeah. I had to get off that. Uh, that. Okay, so we're looking at the Mid-Year Progress Report for the Water Trail. And um, there's like two lines that have to change. The ones about Ford River Network coming to the large conflict since when it can't make it. That's easy. And I need to change the line that says, remember to put the stuff in their spreadsheet. But she did commit to a major meeting. Oh, well, um, what she said was. Got up and they the, the, yes, the date that we proposed in April, which was, I believe, the 18th, she discovered that there was something on her calendar that she had forgotten about. So we'll have to pick a different date in April. Well, in the sense that today is when we have to turn in the final report, it's the end of the grant period. So we could do it in early May. January is midway, and May is the end of it? Right. Because we got grant June. Oh, well, there's an idea. I just, I, I just, I just don't see April. I mean, you just meet, you just meet in March, January, March. Britt, can you say that again? 
could we ask her if she'd be willing to come down to the big Little River paddle race on the 16th? Uh, Good opportunity for Toby Richard to talk. See what's going on. It's actually the day after the final report is due. May, May, May 15th. And of course, there's the other complication that Gwyneth has discovered is a long way from Athens to South Georgia. But no further than South Georgia to Athens. Right, and she really, wants, us. she really wants us to organize with the Block Lake River Water Trail so she can come down at the same time to both attempts. But the 18th is what Margaret Tyson suggested for that because their usual meeting is the Thursday just before that. So I don't really have a suggestion right now. Um, what I would suggest is we need to probably discuss that more in the Water Trail Committee and see if we can come up with some date that she'll agree to. If she'll agree to 16th man come to paddle race, problem solved. Or. Well, we're invited to any event that we have to be on the record. Right. Or have her pick a date and we can make an event for that day. Well, or have her come to our next board meeting. We've tried the pick a date oh, <laughs> twice. <laughs> You should have an April outing. Right. So we got a bunch of ideas. We'll run them by her and find something. And maybe maybe we could do it in conjunction with Burger Tyson and Block Lake or Water Trail or Maybe that's just not doable, as someone at that carrot remarked. It's no farther down here from Athens than it is from here to Athens. Usually, your professors are typically all the way back to the same As me. Somebody know about that carrot. <laughs> right. Um, if we can go back to the progress report. Uh, on the one hand, this may not strictly be necessary because the Water Trail Committee has already approved it, but since it does have a financial item in it and we have a board meeting that happens to be the day before the reports to perhaps we can get a board vote to approve the report with the, the couple of changes I mentioned. So move. Okay, Dave moved that and Chris Miracle seconded it. Discussion. Well, the motion area was to approve the Black Hot Water Trail video report with the two changes I mentioned, which were basically to remove the mention of Georgia River Network coming down to the March of that. Well, I'm 
Yamaha River Water Trail, item number eight. Under that, 8A, 13th December 2014 meeting. Okay. Okay, it's actually 9A. To the speakers and the attendees. Chris Graham will scribble up a draft, and we're suggesting maybe you could then send them. Okay. All righty then. I don't think we need a motion for that, do we? Okay, um, Chris, do you want to say more about that event, or should we talk about the March event? the logo contest to just high school students or do we want to include college students as well? I think we had that discussion on the water trail list and the conclusion was to stick to high school students because college students competing with them would be kind of an unfair competition. Okay. That's reasonable. Is that what you remember, Chris? That's correct. Okay. And uh, Deanna has already contacted the various high school art teachers, and they're busily aiming for February, whatever that uh, is. 17. 17. Okay. Okay, so does the PR look good to everybody uh, with the um, with the one typo that I fixed? I had the length of the water trail wrong, but that's fixed now. Nobody's saying anything, so... Looks good, John. All right. I was busy reading the history. See, this is why we send it out in advance. People can read it before. It's also, of course, why we print it, so we read it at the end. Okay, I don't think we really need a motion of the board to send a press release. So, uh, Chris, you and I seem to be the active... Chris Graham, you and I seem to be the active members of the PR committee, so if you think it's good, I think it's good. Let's we'll start sending it. All righty then. Uh, I'll send it to the usual ones that I sent it to, and um, Gary, perhaps you could send it to your usual list. Quick, actually, I did. It's from one to four on Saturday. Yep. 
Um, just a thought, from one to four is fine. Could you also do a meeting in the morning and then have a paddle in the room in the afternoon? And of course, when we have our monthly meeting anyway. Um, what we were discussing when we were talking to Gwyneth about coming is actually do a paddle in the morning and then do a meeting in the afternoon. <coughs> Yes. So Heather had talked about maybe doing a water quality testing uh, in the morning and having the summer on the afternoon. That might be the best option of all. Because the next section of the river to paddle is 11 miles, so you wouldn't be able to do it in the morning. Uh, actually, um, Heather volunteered when I was talking to her about the idea of paddling in the morning that she has put in where you can do anything from an hour to four hours. So, and for that matter, we could probably combine the two things. Take the testing gear, do some testing, paddle for an hour, and assuming people are willing to get there by like nine o'clock. Okay. I might get some more people out there. So it sounds like you're thinking of having an outing the same day. Except someone else will have to plan that one because I'm actually out of town that morning. Okay. Did you sleep through the meeting? Yeah, there is that. It may be a little too much to do all in one day with prepping for the meeting. Yeah. If you missed that, uh, Chris Miracle was also saying that might be a bit much. I think it's still be pretty cold in the mornings in March. So what about the next week for the paddle? And then we have less constraints about where. Anyway, that's I guess over to the audience committee to figure out. Okay, and I think the usual suspects agreed to show up in the menu on the 14th. I think Dave, were you a volunteer? Yeah. And Chris and Deanna. You're talking about setup now. Right, setup. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And Same same folks agreed. Right. Okay. Uh, so what else do you need to do to know or or get volunteers for talk about about that meeting, Chris Graham. You're very, very faint. You, you got very, very faint. Can't hear you. Try again. A little better. Try it. Go ahead. <laughs> Maybe we should invest in a speaker phone. I'm going to bring my speaker next. Chris Miracle is going to bring a speaker. That's a little better, Chris. Go ahead. Local, you're talking about trying to get the local governments to send somebody to speak, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And I needed um, Chris Miracle to call the Hector County back and keep the head. You know, get the cars going. Okay, well, you know, we're giving them the opportunity. If they don't choose to exercise it, we can't make them. Okay, um, shall we move on to the other event items? The other two are Karen items. 
9C and 9D? Well, we held the Native Plant Society meeting and lost home and spoke. So that's happened already. And So you spoke for all the WPA? Who, who spoke for all the meeting? The meeting that we had at Heather's for the Coastal Plain Chat. Oh, that one. Yes, okay, right. And you yeah. spoke for Wallace. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All righty then. Move right along. And we had it, because we didn't have it at UGA, we had it at Heather's, so we didn't do a tour of the uh, gardens because we didn't hold it at UGA. So that takes care of CND. Well, that was easy. Look at four. All righty then. You get that, Gary? Uh, Gary reported on me and John Smoke. That's an item number nine C. Okay, correct. Uh, and because the meeting not was held. Anything else down, you spoke, Gary. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And on 9D, we, because we held the meeting at, on C at Heather's, we didn't hold it at UGA, so therefore we didn't do a tour of the gardens at UGA. All righty then. Uh, any other events? Yes, not. On the number 10, Public Relations Committee. Um, I don't know anything other than what we just talked about. I guess just a brief comment that the Georgia Water Coalition Dirty Dozen PR went really well. Chris Manganello, who organizes that for Georgia River Network, said they got 40% more uh, press coverage for this one than for last year. All right. Yeah, so that's good. And of course, uh, we got. Uh, See, the legislature just went in session yesterday, so that's gonna that's gonna pick up steam. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yep. And of course, we got we got TV coverage on WCTV. Uh, the legislature. Um, I don't know where to mention this, but uh, just say it here. There's a solar bill proposing to change that 1973 law to allow power purchase agreements or leasing, which would greatly ease Hallelujah. financing solar. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. the, it, it's coming, it's not in yet. Uh, the bill's been submitted and it was negotiated with Georgia Power and the EMCs who claim they're happy with it. Okay. Bye, Karen. <laughs> That would be a great thing. This thing has been in one form or another at the legislature every year since about 2000. But now that Georgia Power wants to claim credit for it, maybe it'll pass. All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, I did have one other PR thing, um, which I sent to the board list, which was um, Georgia Sierra Club asked me to write up a thing about why people are, should be activists. And I sent it around, and uh, you know, they specifically asked for it to be about the uh, Sable Trail Pipeline. Did y'all see it? Yes. Well, considering that I wrote my name on there as Wall's president, it'd be nice to have a vote at the board approving it. If you do approve it, I think Chris Miracle hates it. What? <laughs> Board, 
you have a second? Well, I seconded it. Chris Miracle seconded it even though he hits it. <laughs> I knew it. See, that's why. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it passes unanimously. Uh, right, which brings us, unless uh, Chris Graham, you got any other PR stuff we need to talk about? Anybody else? Okay, it brings us to our next item. Um, should we form a committee for opposition to the Staple Grill Pipeline? I think we have the several volunteers, which would be Chris Graham, Chris Miracle, and me, and uh, Mark Register. I want to know um, what this committee would, uh, how, how we would go about proposing that. I mean, the, the uh, comment, time for comment on it is, has passed, uh, you know, comment through FERC, and it's in their hands to make a decision. So what, what guidelines would we operate under? Well, there's an item to start with. That's actually a misapprehension. The deadline passed, however, I heard directly from John Patonum of Kirk. They will continue to accept comments and even motions to intervene. They even have a technical legal term for that. It's called out of time. <laughs> and Steve Cayley with uh, Greenwall says he has that in writing from lawyers from Kirk. So in fact, you can still continue to use the Kirk process to oppose it. In addition, there's an EPA methane rule that supposedly goes big speech about today that deals directly with pipelines and compressor stations. It has its own comment period, which so far only has four comments, all from fossil fuel organizations. Right, so it might be useful to try to get people to comment on that. There's also all the other usual forms of opposition. You may have seen that Dexter Sharper, who's the state representative for District 177, which is basically the Aldosta, wrote a letter to for opposing the pipeline. By wrote, I mean, he made a few changes after someone drafted it, I forget who that was. And uh, two other Georgia state reps and one Florida state rep have written such letters. It'd be nice to get more of them to do that. We also have the issue that Sanford Bishop, who is the U.S. Ranger, most of the pipeline path in, path in Georgia, just voted for the Keystone XL pipeline. As did Austin Scott, of course, but that we would expect. So contacting the federal, you know, there's, I, I could go on, but there's all the usual stuff up to including demonstrations or, you know, whatever. Um, uh, you know, and we could also go back to something we tried before, but we got rained out due to outing where the pipeline crosses the Bridge of Cuchin. Um, just don't do it in uh, March because that's the thing that we got rained out. But sometime. Not, not the, uh, the thing that I was talking about. Yeah, I'm like all the other committees, so somebody can be focusing on that so we don't have to have the full board dealing with it or even the executive committee for every little item. 
Also, from my point of view, mostly what's been going on with pipeline opposition is I come up with an idea and people go, yeah, I guess. And, uh, you know, for example, this thing I just wrote for Georgia Sierra Club, it would be very useful for me to be able to bounce that by the committee first. And the committee may come up with other places to send a thing like that, or a different thing, or a committee like other committees for this particular purpose of organizing a few of the pipeline. Does that answer your question? In depth. <laughs> We got four volunteers for this committee. I have a question. Sure. So, in contact with Dr. No at the issue. Yes, let's talk to you about that later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Graham, Chris Miracle. Sounds like you might want to volunteer, Gary. <laughs> or not. I'll talk to him later about that. Yeah. Oh, where you want to go? Yeah. 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 James Reagan, our new member, is showing some interest, but he doesn't want to actually volunteer for the committee. Yeah. Does not. Yeah. Okay, does someone want to make a motion to form this committee with members as listed? I will vote. Oh, and I, oh, we need a chair. Can you, uh, I think previously we discussed that I'd need a chair, if that's okay with you. Yes. Right. right. Chris Miracle moved we form the committee with those members and would be as chair. Okay. Dave seconds that motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Um. A, a comment on social media. I got uh, a request from uh, our geologist buddy at uh, BCU to be a friend on Facebook. Not Jimmy. And I saw that as progress. Good. After that minute, Heather's where he was there. I got you going to use the new class. Yeah, Don Timmy was uh, very helpful for the Georgia Water Coalition stuff. Mm -hmm. He also sent me a bunch of additional material when I spoke to Al Map Sierra Club. Al Map? That was in November. And uh, I put him in touch with Chris Maracle because Chris retained a geologist to do his study down there. I wonder if he's been to a particular sink and he was very easy skin. Well, good question. Uh, I don't know, but we could ask him about scanning at the Dead River Sink. Okay, so um, action items. I think we already talked about the media advertising and targeted recruiting. Um, and the other thing's already been done. The other three things are my items and other than the one that we just talked about. Oh, the flooding study. Um, there's a little update on the flooding study. Yeah, I saw something. Media. What did you see, Dave? I remember. <laughs> oh, well, uh, oh, yeah, the, the city and county are communicating. Uh, they are. The Valdosta City Council had a retreat in Colquitt County. Right. Yeah, it's always about town. Which the new editor at the he Valdosta Daily Times does not like one little bit. Too bad, but that's what you do. You get away from home. Uh, actually, the last county commission is taking a meeting in the county for their retreats. Normally, you go out. Anyway, so um, at that retreat, one of the 11 items that they put as their goals or priorities for the year is this flooding study. 
Now, the unfortunate wrinkle is they did not completely discount the idea in the first flooding study of a levee next to the Wittacoochee River. What tributary did you say that was on? I was afraid you'd ask that. Um, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Sugar Creek. Somebody just needs to show them video footage of the uh, Mississippi floods from back in the 80s. Or yeah. last, or last year, the year before, the year before, the year before. I mean, hello. Well, those floods are why they called in the Corps in the first place. Right. Uh, what I did show them, for Chris Miracle's suggestion, is some information about the uh, Sewanee River Sill at the Okie which is a kind of a failed experiment from the 1960s. It didn't do exactly what was intended and did have a bunch of unfortunate consequences. And they had never heard of this, and the Corps hadn't told them about it. <laughs> <laughs> so now well, they're looking at it, at least, and asking the Corps to explain, how would this be different? Hmm. And at least Tim Carroll, our usual contact city council member, at least he says the levy alone wouldn't be enough, and he does recognize several issues, such as it would only reduce the water level somewhat, and what if it rained a lot on Valdosta while the levee was closed, and it would have the opposite effect. Mm -hmm. So we shall see, at least they're moving ahead. You know, it, it's not going to happen unless they get state and federal funding for it. So there's still time to try to convince them the levee part is a bad idea. And what we really want them to deal with is the larger flooding study trying to determine where is the water coming from, why is it coming, which in my opinion is it's going to be 